Hello, my name is Jeremy Upton. I'm one of the senior developers at Skeleton Key. And today I wanted to show you uh, how to use the Simple Color Swap add-on. Simple Color Swap is an add-on for making global color changes to custom themes. But this is something useful when, for example, you are rebranding a solution for a particular client or otherwise making changes to a solution's colors and you don't want to have to go into layout mode and modify every single style element of your theme where a particular color appears. Uh, that can get pretty tedious and become quite the task pretty quickly. So I'm going to start by bringing on a second window here. I recommend placing the color swap add-on uh, button on a layout that you do not intend to update the theme on. The reason for that is uh, when you install Simple Color Swap, it's actually going to add a custom theme to your solution. Uh, it's the theme that is used by the add-on itself. And if you modify the theme of a layout that contains this simple, simple uh, Color Swap button, um, that button will actually uh, not retain its look and feel there at all. So just for keeping things looking good, we're going to have this button sitting on a separate layout. So maybe like a settings layout or an admin level. Uh, layout for your solution. When we open the color swap window, we've got a button here on step one that's going to open up our theme manager. I'm going to highlight uh, the theme that I want to import into color swap. I'm going to hit command C to copy that. And in doing that, um, I've copied the full XML uh, from that custom theme. And we can see now here down in step three, I can click that button to paste that into the add-on. It's going to automatically parse that out for us and start displaying our colors. So let's talk a little bit about the interface that we've got in front of us here. Um, this screen is a unique list of every color that is referenced anywhere within your custom theme. We can see on the left-hand side here, um, we've got some details on the RGB value and the hex code uh, for each color. I've also given you a button where you can copy that hex code, perhaps if you want to paste that someplace else. Um, in the center here, we've got a popover that gives you a reference of everywhere within your theme that that color is referenced. Uh, these are individual style elements. So for example, you can see this one. Uh, this is a EB, which is edit box, um, with a, a bottom border color when it is in focus. So uh, we apparently have a uh, an edit box in our theme that is styled that the bottom border is that color blue when the field is in focus. That's basically what that's telling us. And so you can see uh, some colors will have a whole lot of references. If we go down to a very, very common color like say white, pure white, we can see everywhere in our solution or in our theme rather that white is referenced. And I wanna point out real quick that you can also go to the bottom right here to the style reference. And when we go to here, this is looking at things from the opposite direction. So instead of looking at the unique list of colors, we're now looking at uh, the unique list of all of our um, style elements and the color that they reference. So from here, we could uh, search for a particular style, like here's our uh, primary button style. I'll select that and click on the magnifying glass to search. And here is all of the color references used by uh, our primary button. So for example, we've got these different shades of blue here. So there's the uh, normal color the slightly different color for the hover state, another color for the pressed state, and it looks like there is a checked state that has, uh, again, a fourth color there. So just a different way to view um, the colors and get some details on how they're being used in your system. But for the most part, you're gonna be doing your work uh, on this screen. On the right-hand side, you can see where we can select to change any color. So I've selected this top one here, the text code 6689BC. And there's two different ways that I can modify this color. One is I can insert a hex code or just type in a hex code if I happen to know what it is. And we can see it's updated our color here and we can see uh, what the new color is gonna be. 
Alternatively, I can simply click on the color picker here. And what we've uh, been able to give you is full access to um, the color picker that's in use by FileMaker. So you can see we've got our regular color palette here where we can select a color there. We even have the ability to bring up uh, the sliders where we can modify color by RGB or um, hue, saturation, and brightness. Um, however it is that you prefer to uh, enter your color, you can do that. You can see your end result there. And when we click accept, we can see now that uh, this color reference of 6689BC is now going to be modified to reference this new color A240BD. Uh, and so what this is telling us is everywhere in our solution where this particular hex code is referenced is now going to reference this new color. Um, we can also copy that new color if, say, we wanted to use it again someplace else and have more than one uh, color modified to that same value. There are check boxes along the left-hand side. And what those are intended for is oftentimes you'll see in a custom theme that there are slight variations of a particular color that to your eye, certainly to my eye in this case, uh, don't appear to be any different. You can see these top three colors of blue here that I've selected. To my eye, on my screen, they are exactly the same. Though technically, on the back end, they are just fractions of a color off. Uh, you can see the slight difference uh, between their hex code values and their RGB values there. But perhaps that was unintentional. Um, perhaps you uh, copied the wrong color or for one reason or another, there was a slight variation of a color that got used in your solution. And your intent is for that not to be the case. You really just want there to be one version of this blue. And so you want to roll these up uh, in your solution. So we have 32 items that are referencing this color, eight items that are referencing the second one, and 57 that are referencing this. I really just want all of these to reference one version of this blue. So I've selected these three colors here. And I'm just going to pick this top one. You can see now that this uh, little blue arrow icon has been highlighted saying that these three colors that I've selected are gonna be rolled up and they're all going to use this version of the blue now. Down here at the bottom, I'm going to combine selected. And in just a few moments, I'll get an update. And now we can see we have 97 items all referencing that same color blue. And I can do the same thing down here. Let's say I actually want all of these variants of light blue to just reference this one right here. So I'm going to select all of them, highlight that one to be my color where things are getting rolled up, combine them. So now we've cleaned up our solution to where we just have three variations of that blue. Uh, perhaps that's my normal state, hover state, and pressed state, for example, would be those three uh, variations of blue. I also want to point out that we do give you um, a little information screen. You can see what's this with a little arrow pointing to your combine button there. If you click on that, it'll give you some details on exactly how this is working and some of the behavior uh, that you might expect to get out of it in different situations. So let's take a look at um, what it takes to actually recolor our uh, sample layout that we have here. Um, in our little sample file here, we've got a primary color that's our blue, and we've got a secondary color that is an orange. So let's say I want to rebrand this maybe for a different client that has a different color scheme, and their colors aren't blue and orange. Maybe their colors are purple and green. So I'm going to come in here to my main color blue. Let's change that. We'll go find the green that they use. Actually, let's do purple for this one. I just like to start with that one. So there's purple. Now we happen to know that this second lighter color of blue is our hover state, and this lightest color is our checked or our pressed state. And so what we want to have is a slight variation of our new purple for our hover and press state. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that original purple that I selected, come down here to the next one, 
paste it in. But then I'm going to go in and using the color picker, I'm going to modify my saturation and my brightness to get a slight variation on that purple for my second. And that you may not even be able to tell on the video that's any different at all, but it's slightly different. And then let's do another one for my pressed state. I'm going to copy this second one now. Paste it in. Let's go in here. I'll make this one a little bit more obvious so that you can tell on the video there. So now we have three shades of that purple for my new primary color. Right down here are the three variations of my orange that I want to change now to green. So I'll pick a green there. We're going to do the same operation. Copy that. Paste it in there, and we're going to make a variant of it. Change the saturation and the brightness. And let's do another one here for the pressed states. And of course, this does require you to just have knowledge of your own solution and, and how you've handled different states to be able to do it. Um, but you can get the general idea. So. I've now got every reference to my blue changing to purple and every reference to my orange changing to green. If I'm happy with all the changes I've made, I can click on finish and save changes. My new uh, theme is already saved and ready to export. I can modify the name of it here if I want. I'm just gonna leave it with underscore new that it's appended there. I'm gonna open up my theme manager, command V to paste. We can see the new theme has been pasted in there. From here, I can go back and make more changes. I can start on a new theme, but for now, I'm just going to close this and move it aside. And let's go into layout mode of our sample layout here. Move my window a little bit so you can see what we're doing. So I'm going to change the theme here to the new version. Hit OK. There's some unsaved changes there, but we took care of that. And with just a few minutes of work, we see that we have recolored our entire solution. And so every reference, like I said before, to that blue, which is in places like the header, uh, to the color of these icons, even down to the color of my radio buttons here, every reference to that blue has been changed now to purple. And every reference to the green, including hover and click states, or sorry, every reference to my orange, uh, has been now changed to green, including like the highlight here that we have uh, for this master detail. So extremely easy uh, to change an entire color scheme um, on your solution uh, to a new one. I want to point out another uh, little fun thing that we've included here, actually a couple other fun things. Um, the first one is um, you may have a situation where a client uh, has you create a color scheme for them, and maybe they like to have some users that uh, enjoy working in dark mode. Well, we can do that for you. I'm going to open up Color Swap again. I'm going to bring in my new theme that I just created. So there's my new version. Copy it. Paste that in. Here's the new theme here with my purple and green. And I'm going to go up to my scripts menu, and you can just barely see that on the uh, on the window I have there. But uh, from the scripts menu, you'll have a, a simple color swap uh, folder there, and I'm going to select create dark mode. And that is going to turn for just a few moments on my custom theme here. And it's going to make uh, modifications to all the colors of the theme and not just changing the dark colors to light and the light to dark, as you can see it's doing down here with um, the grayscale colors, but we actually have it running an algorithm against the colors that you've selected for your main theme to make sure that when we transition to a dark mode that we have appropriate contrast ratios. If you've ever seen, uh, say, like a really bold red against a dark background, it can kind of create that that uh, visual vibration um, that can cause headaches in some cases. And so what it's doing is it's softening up these colors that I've selected to work well 
against a potentially dark background uh, in a dark mode. So let's take this now. Let's say I name this one dark. I'm going to paste that in. And close this window now. And let's go into layout mode again. There's my new dark mode. And with just a few seconds of work, we now have a dark mode variant of our theme. And you can see how it did modify the purple and the green that I selected. It softened them up a little bit so it's not quite so strenuous on the eye uh, to view it. So a couple of things that I want to point out here just at the end of this video about uh, using the add-on. It's going to be very important that you use a theme that is uh, fully saved, a custom theme that's uh, fully, save, fully saved with no um, local styling. Uh, any local styling on a layout uh, that exists when you change to a different theme is going to be reverted to uh, default styling, which in some cases is not reversible uh, by simply saying undo. Um, kind of depends on your order of operations there, but it is highly recommended that every element, every layout object uh, that you have is saved to a style in your custom theme uh, before you attempt to start making changes uh, with this tool uh, just to get best results. Uh, but with that, uh, I hope you. Uh, get a lot of use out of it. I uh, certainly appreciate you taking a look taking a look at it for us. And if you have any questions, you can always contest it, contact us at skeletonkey.com. Thanks.